The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. And by Mosaic, your Lightroom photos automatically on every device and backed up. And by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 109. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. On last week's episode, we talked about an A-mount lens adapter for the Sony NEX line, a brand new iOS camera app, another Photoshop alternative, and gave you a free and easy way to remove backgrounds from your images. If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, listen with the popular Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox music apps, or watch in HD on TiVo. Hey, hey, Joe, we are back. How you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Nice. Doing good. Did an all-day event yesterday. I am in pain. I'm showing <laughs> showing my age, Trevor. Yeah, it's lugging all that gear around, right? My God, yeah, yeah. I want these mirrorless to come out soon. Come on, I want them lighter, smaller. <laughs> yeah, but it's the, still the, the glass though. The you gotta worry about that stuff. Is so well. heavy. Yeah, and I bracket. You know, when I'm when I'm you when I'm going and doing like a big event, I'm usually you know I have like a two or three pound bracket that the camera is in anyways for being able to, you know, switch from landscape to portrait, you know, in a split second. Right. And, you know, retain the exact flash lo location. So we get, uh, you know, uh, exact uh, yeah, lighting. Yeah, consistent for, lighting. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's just heavy in itself. Um, sure. You know, we use custom brackets, which are, you know, bulky and, uh, but they just simply work. But yeah, I'm dying, man. I'm falling apart. <laughs> uh, that's what happens, man. We're getting old. Yeah, I usually hear you complaining when you're like chopping wood, but now it's summertime, so. Yeah, no, no, I still have some wood to chop. I'll I'll be doing that this summer, but. <laughs> but anyway, so nice. uh, we have a uh, a new mail application we wanted to talk about. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. for uh, for those of you using Mac Mail, um, I know you know the mail app that comes with the operating system. Um, you know, that's what I use. It works for me, but I know a lot of people don't really like it. I know, Joe, you're not really a huge fan of that app. I'm not a fan. Um, and you tried uh, Sparrow right. a while ago, which has uh, since then been sold to Google, but now there's this new one called um, Airmail. Yes. Which yes. Looks I'm excited good, right? about this, man. I'm excited because, you know, all the reports state that um, Airmail is very similar to Sparrow. And like you were saying, I loved Sparrow. Sparrow was really great. Right. Um, if, if anyone used Sparrow, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, just think about your mail software on your Mac um, times like two, you know, when it comes to, um, let's say, different features that help you a lot to manage your mail for sending mail, you know, sending mail to an entire list, all kinds of different things that you can do um, with it that you just can't with um, mail as well. Well, right. now, supposedly, this airmail has all of the great features of Sparrow plus an entire slew of others. So, and yeah. the good thing here, Trev, is the $1.99. So I haven't picked it up yet, but this will be, you know, kind of when we get off here, I'm going to go and do that because we just found this. So I'm excited about that. It'd be great. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it supports all the major email services, including Gmail and Yahoo, AOL and iCloud. Right. Um, plus you can actually add your own um, email accounts with your own domain. You know, exactly. just manually enter those, which is pretty cool. So it supports multiple accounts. So if you do have multiple um, email addresses, maybe you have a Gmail, maybe you have one with your domain name on it, um, you can add both of those in. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And yeah. you can view all your inboxes at once, which is nice. Kind of a one of those unified, eh, not really a unified inbox, but you can view all of them at once. Right. right. Um, so that's good. Yeah, no, $1.99, can't beat it. $1.99, can't beat that, definitely. Don't take a look at the uh, Mac um, app store for it. So right. anyways, moving on Lightroom five, finally out of beta. Um, you know, I am okay. So in my, you know, I'm excited about this because I, I'm, I'm like a proponent of getting stuff done as quick as possible without going into Photoshop. That is right. my goal because I deal with 
you know, like, you know, probably half a million to a quarter of uh, three quarters of a million pictures per year. So it's a lot of photographs to go through a lot of work and anything that I can get done um, quicker, faster, cheaper, so to speak, um, because time is money. Yep. Um, I want to do it. So Lightroom 5 is finally out in the full release. Um, you guys should definitely... Um, if you haven't picked it up, go and pick it up. If you're a Lightroom three person, two person, or even four moving forward, there's supposedly a lot of good stuff that, uh, is in there. And, uh, I think I'm going to report back on that as soon as I get that installed, because as a studio owner, we do not install any beta. Um, we have once, you know, years ago, I think it was like going from Lightroom, to Lightroom two or something. And we right. had this horrendous you know, corruption yeah. of our catalogs and, you know, lost probably like a quarter of a million images, not lost them, but just lost the metadata from them. And that was right. Just, that was brutal. Yeah, so, no, that's a mess. You don't want to do that. Yeah. I mean, you know, so Lightroom, the full version, if you're getting it for the first time, it's 149 bucks. If you're upgrading, it's 79. Um, you can get it through a creative cloud membership, you know, which is the full creative cloud for uh 50 bucks a, um, a month excuse right. me and if you want to get just the lightroom app um you can get it for uh 1999 through creative cloud um yeah. that's if you're a, a you know a previous uh or a new a new user right. i think the previous i think is like 10 bucks a month or yeah something, something like that, like that. So, i just you know if you need the creative cloud, then go for it. We've we talked about it last week and the week before. It's I'm not. I think we've pretty much. I'm not very happy Adobe with Wars. it, but <laughs> yeah. But what's nice about um, Lightroom is it's still not quote unquote creative cloud. Um, you can actually yeah, you can still it's buy in there it. or out. You can still buy the software. Mm -hmm. um, so while you can buy it, buy it. It's definitely worth it. And if you're upgrading for seventy nine bucks, I think it's kind of a no brainer. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, like I said, I'll report back. I'll report back how my catalog. You know, was like I said, there's hundreds of thousands of images um we'll see how that goes i'm going to see how long it takes and if there's any kind of missing data or whatever i'll report back to you guys yeah cool. so anyways um on your front twitter right they retire what is it their api version one finally yeah yeah so for those of you that may not know an api is the uh um, application programming interface right. it's uh it's what the developers use when they create third-party applications, whether they be for iPhone, Android, or even desktop applications to interface with Twitter. So basically, um, the old version of the API was using um, username and password authentication. Right. Um, it had a lot of old data set information in it. So they finally killed it. They finally retired that API and they're moving to version 1.1. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are using any old applications um, that you have not upgraded recently, odds are pretty good that they're using the old API and that it will probably stop working for you. And that includes, you know, not just current, like, for example, one of them was the TweetDeck, right, which you use yeah. on a regular basis. But yep. any application that you got, either iOS or Android, that's older, that's not being updated, right, like you said, I mean, things that don't get updated, they're obviously using the old one, it's going to stop working. So either it's yeah. already stopped or it will stop the next time you, like, <laughs> reboot or restart it. So Sure, sure. Yeah, at, there was a know. lot of third-party iOS apps and Android apps for interfacing with Twitter a that lot, maybe just yeah. never took off all that well. So the developers never really kept up to date on it. Right. Um, if you happen to be using one of those, you know, that's when I would, you know, check it. Cause you know, you go to log in, it may not work for you anymore. Yeah. Not good. Not yeah. good. So, you know, we've talked about this, um, in the past and, you know, I think everyone out there knows that we're both Apple, um, artists, I guess, creative yeah, Apple fanboys. We've been in the, you know, we've been creating, um, our, artwork let's just call it um through apples for many years mm -hmm. um in the next room i still have a apple II, you know with the big drives you know on the side and just so you know um but you know we've we have pcs also in the studio because we need to have multi you know it needs to be multi-platform because sure you know there's there's compatibility issues but anyways so but pretty much we're you know Apple, I guess, fanboys, as you would say. Yeah. Um, but lately, you know, I've kind of, and we both kind of said, you know, what is going on with Apple? I don't know. After like Steve Jobs kind of um, went yeah. away, yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of changed. It just seems like it has changed. And, you know, there was a report that um, I just found, which was kind of interesting. And they were talking about, you know, shares. How many times like one of their ads is actually shared? 
And one of these- um, Like through social network shares. Any type of social yeah. media, yep. exactly. So they did like this report and they came back with a pie graph on you know, Apple, Samsung, and uh, Microsoft. And when you look at it, it's like, what has happened to Apple? That's what you think to yourself. Yeah. It's like, I don't understand. I mean, you know, Apple was commanding 5% of the share pie. Basically, it's not being shared. None of their stuff is being shared. Whereas like Samsung has 60%, and Microsoft 35%, it's very, very interesting. And what I find interesting is how Samsung has come, you know, basically, I wanna say from nowhere. I mean, you know, they've been like in the limelight as of late, obviously being sued by Apple, paying Apple a billion dollars or more or whatever it is, but they're really pushing forward, they're pushing hard. I mean, that Samsung S4 that we talked about, and yep. you see it in, you know, you see it continuously out there. They are actually taking that phone and that, you know, the, the actual structure of the phone is what, about a year old, two years old, but they're constantly coming up with new, you know, um, iterations of it, uh, you know, let's say back end um, builds of it that are coming out with new things on a regular basis using the old equipment. So people are excited about it and they're constantly sharing it. Whereas like we, we were talking about earlier, right, Trev? Apple is just kind of like more of the same, right? Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, I think I've expressed on the show before um, about my iPhone 5. And, oh God, yeah. you know, I like it, but there are some buggy things with it. You know, I have problems with the speakerphone. Uh, the Bluetooth doesn't work quite as nice. I mean, my 3S, from, as far as the speakerphone, <laughs> yeah, the Bluetooth 3GS, went, was, yeah. was much better, you know. Definitely, yeah. um, but, I mean, the the new iPhone 5 is nice. I mean, it's a nice screen. It's it's a lighter weight. It's right. fast. It's powerful. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, you know, so it's nice. But, yeah, it's kind of one of those. I mean, it's a huge step from the 3GS, no doubt. But over the 4S, I mean, aside from the bigger screen, I mean, that's really all that I feel right. with this phone. Whereas the Samsung devices, I mean, they're really um, doing some great stuff. Yeah. You know, they're really coming up with some with some nice phones, nice builds, you know, nice features. Um, yeah. And I think that's what it is. You know, again, Android now is the dominant mobile operating system. Right. Um, iOS is the biggest operating system on a dedicated device, let's say, um, or a line of devices. But Android right. is is more, you know, it's everywhere. I mean, all the different manufacturers are are creating Android devices now. So right. as an operating system, that has become more popular, sure. Um, Samsung, as far as the hardware goes, is becoming very popular. Yeah. Um, they're not as big as Apple is as far as their hardware goes, hardware domination, let's say, right. within the market. Um, but what they're doing is exciting. So I, that's why I do see why they're getting more shares. Um, you know, yeah. really- I, I mean, mean you know you, what you want when you watch TV, right, Trev? And yep. you're you you're watching, let's say, the commercials that are going on. Let's say through the Super Bowl or just general uh, commercials. When you see um, the Samsung commercials, let's say an S4 commercial, they're funny. They're kind of like light. They're good. They're well produced. They're well mm -hmm. done. There's many of them, and they're all good. It reminds me of the Apple days when, you know, it's, I'm a PC, I'm yeah, a Mac, I'm a remember? Mac and, yeah, so it was, yeah. you know, it was fun, it was light, you know, people would be like, you know, they want to they wanted see the next ad that, um, you know, Apple would come out with. Apple right. doesn't have any of those ads anymore. So, you no. know, are they not spending the money on advertisement, or did their, you know, are their ad campaigns going to an alternate, um, you know, a company that just are not, you know, creative enough to come out with some really good ad campaigns, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but Samsung. I think it's a combination. Yeah. I it's think probably everything, right? Yeah. I think they're doing a lot more of the, more of the same, you know, yeah. there's a lot more of like, Hey, this is an iPhone and you can run these great apps and Hey, this is an iPad and you can run these great apps. It's yeah, really, no one is sharing. Them. Nobody's no sharing it because <laughs> it's all the same. I mean, we, we right. know about the apps and, and everything and that's great. But, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, whereas Samsung is sharing, you know, innovative hardware updates and right. things like that, you know, um, that is more share worthy. You also yeah, have the sense. budgets that they spent. I mean, this report shows that Apple spent one billion and Samsung spent four point three billion in 2012. Right. So, I mean, they spent four times as much, but yeah. they've, but their sh their retweets, their social sharing um, is definitely more than four times. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, they're at, at 60%, 60%, Apple's at five. So right. yeah, four So four it's times the interest of the, of the 
content. It's the interest of the ads and all. Um, I think we're going to see some things uh, start breaking um, a little later in the summer, in the, in yeah. the fall with Apple, um, based on some of the, what we saw at WWDC. Right. And uh, I think, you know what, let's get into that after uh, we take a quick commercial break. What do you think? Sounds good. Let's get out of here. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. From phones, tablets, laptops, and PCs, these days photographers use multiple internet connected devices. Have you ever wished you could view your Lightroom images, folders, collections, and metadata from any of these devices? Now you can. Mosaic Storage Systems has created Mosaic View, an application that gives you access to your images without exporting or using a publishing service. Mosaic also offers Mosaic Archive, which directly integrates with Lightroom as a powerful cloud backup solution. Mosaic gives photographers access to all of their images from anywhere on virtually any device. Try Mosaic View today for free and access 2,000 of your most recent images. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Mosaic is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans. Go to mosaicarchive.com and use coupon code DPCAFE at checkout. Mosaic. Lightroom. Anywhere. Any device. Secure. Backed up. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drive. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where ShootProof comes in. At ShootProof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. ShootProof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. ShootProof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through ShootProof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All ShootProof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try ShootProof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, ShootProof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. Shoe proof. Upload, share, sell, print. Sorry, Trev. WWDC. That was fun, right? Yeah, it was interesting. It was kind interesting. Of. I mean, there was some cool announcements um, and some kind of just whatever. <laughs> let me preface. Let me do a little preface here. So... WWDC, we both do, you know, we we're both going to do commentary on it. We did a lot of note taking and a lot of, you know, whenever we're, if we can't make it to a conference, we're always listening um, one way or another. And right. uh, it's for you guys so that we can kind of um, get back to you guys, let you know what's, what's what, both photographic what? as That's well right. as technology. in the industry and the technology. Yep. Absolutely. Well, it was brutal. I mean, to say the least, it was absolutely brutal. This was by far, I think, the worst, I would have to say the worst live cast um, that I've ever seen from Apple as in, let's say in the way of just it working, just the simply delivery working. of it. The yeah. delivery was just horrible. I mean, your, your Mac was not able. And now remember they were only streaming it. If you, you only through um, Safari. So you couldn't yep. get it, you know, through any from Google or you couldn't get it through any other Flash browser or Firefox yeah, or whatever. Any of that. No. So 
so they they did that obviously so apple people get it they you know whatever right, but right. so you think okay they got they got it straight this they know it's going to a safari based browser no problem let me tell you both of our browsers did not work for well into the entire program i would say 45 minutes into it then finally it would work and then cut in cut out so we both went to our iphone to get the coverage that was working for a while then that cut in started pausing yeah, finally I, mine worked pretty good yours I know you was have pretty good mine it. finally went completely out right. um you know it was it was horrendous i mean we were fighting <laughs> just to get the information yeah. Yeah. and uh I, I don't know i don't know it was definitely not fun now you would think that you know a company like apple if they're going to do this type of streaming that they would really have it nailed down Right. Um, I'm sure there are people that watched it live and had a great experience with it, but um, maybe there were just so many people trying to jump on this stream that it just took a big dump. It just couldn't, it couldn't do it. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't, don't know. know. We were waiting too for like an hour. So we were in the queue. It's not like yeah. we weren't, you know, or maybe even longer than an hour. So I don't know. Yeah. I just like you said, I mean, for a company like Apple, you would say, I mean, you sound like we're down on Apple uh, today, but you know what? Maybe we are. I don't know. It's just, it It was lackluster. I don't know. So anyways, so beating going up into, Adobe, now we're beating up Apple. Now yeah. it's just terrible. I don't want to be so yeah. negative, but <laughs> anyway, so, you know, we listened to the entire, um, the entire thing from beginning to ending the end best we could took some notes and yep you know kind of like here's some of the stuff that we found obviously there they talk about a new osx obviously that's like the big what is it mavericks it's called mavericks yeah um yeah which, which is yeah pretty they neat. ran out of uh big cats i guess that was no kind more of big the, cats. the running joke so now they're they're getting into a new name set so mavericks yeah. um i believe it's like a a, a surf area in california so, or a, you know a wave I don't right. know, something like that. You know, it had something to do with surfing. Right, I know there was right. a movie called Mavericks that was all about surfing. And yeah. I believe it was off the California coast and all that stuff. Right, so I guess right. that's where they're getting it from. But uh, yeah, so there's some interesting things with that. Um, you know, it's it's a nice iteration. They talked about um, having the ability to tag files and, you know, run multiple displays, um, run desktops like across multiple displays. I mean, you can already... Right run multiple displays, but now you can access your dock and things like that across yeah, so multiple displays. Multiple desktops. So if you just yeah, multiple picture, desktops. instead of having two screens where you could just move stuff from one screen to another screen, now you have multiple, let's quote unquote, desktops where when right. you go to the second screen, you can actually pull up your icons at the bottom. You yeah, have full functionality to be able to, you know, work on the top little, you know, so that's kind of cool. I was joking with you while, while the conference was going on. I'm like, you know, we, I, I use, I'm a Linux guy, obviously, Unix, and uh, Ubuntu has had this, and so did all of Linux for, God, it has to be like years three, now, right? four years they have had multiple desktops um, right. that function separately, and now it's like, whoa, you know, <laughs> OS X, which is obviously a, you know, a Unix derivative. It is a Unix-based, FreeBSD or BSDI-based right. operating system. Now they have it. It's like, wow, finally, yeah, yeah. okay, great, you know, let's put a note there so yeah yeah i mean no. for us mac users though i mean that's that's a nice feature yeah. added um, it's definitely great yeah yeah um what's cool too is the software gives you the ability to interface with um an apple tv if you have one of yeah. the new generation apple tvs um so you can actually use the tv that's connected to your apple tv as another monitor as which a is, desktop and not yeah. just another monitor which is really cool right which is cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yep so that's, um, yeah, that's what neat. they do, they, they uh, did tabs, they did all kinds of, you know, they, they did that security thing, you know, the, uh, keychain, you know, password security 256 K on that. Um, you know, it was kind of just a little, I wouldn't say anything fabulous. I mean, iBooks, you know, did some stuff with that, uh, you know, uh, Safari got a big boost. That was like one of their major things that yeah, Safari nice now runs leaner and cleaner and faster than, you know, Google's Chrome and much faster. They actually joked right. um, about uh, Firefox and whatnot, which is good. Um, but this is basically done to help Apple um, save life um, with the battery to the battery. Right. So, you know, you they get more hours and that you'll see later kind of in, in our little talk here that that's basically what they're trying to do. Um, is, yeah, you know, they made some tweaks to the software to actually right. have it run more efficiently and to conserve energy in during, 
you know, background functions and cycles, right. you know, applications that are running, but are running in the background that right. aren't necessarily using as much processing power, they can actually send less power to that. They can actually right. save power. So the whole idea being is that everything is moving to portability anyway, exactly. you know, laptops and, and things. So smaller they want and smaller it smaller batteries, lighter, 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 that whole thing. You know right. what I thought was really cool? is now if they're you know you have x amount of memory right that your that your system is using what they're doing now with the new the os which i think is great is if you're currently you know you have x amount of strapped memory in other words memory that is currently um in a state of going to be used or it's it's on hold let's say if that memory is not being used for x number of ticks let's call it it will actually compress that part of memory Right. And stick it someplace. And then when it needs to access it again, access it again, it immediately like unarchives it. And then you could use it immediately. And then this gives you more available memory um, right. for all the applications. I thought that was really great. That it was, is. That it was is. definitely, you know, not just iteration. That was innovative. I like that a lot. That That's going to be powerful um, and we will be able to use or need less memory. Uh, less gigs, let's say, we'll probably be able to do, you know, with eight gigs that we, you know, used to be able to do with 12, let's say, um, or whatnot. So I, right. I, I could see that being pretty cool. I like that a lot. Right, right. Yeah, then they updated the calendar app, which is actually pretty nice. There were some yeah, nice updates in there. Um, they have, uh, they, they updated maps and stuff too. <laughs> That's like um, a joke, right? They have Everyone's the map laughing. integration now and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like Apple the sore maps. wound. I mean, Apple maps. Upgrade. Yeah, they're they're kind of uh, not quite yes. there yet. Yeah. I know a lot of people were were really ticked off, you know, initially when the new OS came out and Apple got rid of um, maps on the iPhones and stuff. Yeah, and you know, got rid of Google Maps and yeah. used their own mapping application, which really was not great. And yeah, last took- summer, I was going down to the Keys, and it <laughs> actually had me do a right turn into the ocean into the over ocean. a bridge yeah, um, yeah that's great so and that was that was really comical i couldn't even believe that. i think i talked about that on one of the shows i'm like are you kidding me so anyways yeah so you know that's the that's the os stuff and they talked about air right yeah the, the MacBook, macbook air i have an air i love the air it's awesome and the main thing that they talk about is what Yep. Battery, battery life. Battery life. Battery, battery life. Battery life. Yeah. yeah. Well, and again, the combination. So improvement right. of batteries with the combination of this new operating system, Mavericks. Um, they're saying that, you know, on the 11 inch, you can get five to nine hours of battery life. Yeah. It and moved up from now it's like five hours and they're going to, the new, the new um, way will be nine hours. Nine so they're hours. adding yep. four. And the same thing with the 13 inch. They started out with like seven hours, which is the current version of that. They're move that's going to go all the way up to 12 hours. So their their whole point was, you know, now you can run your, you know, MacBook Air all day long, you know. Right. That, that was like their their tagline. So that's kind of cool. I mean, you it's know, cool. yeah. we always want more, you know, life on these laptops because a lot of Absolutely. us, you know, we're traveling, you know, I come, you know, we're going wherever we're doing shows or whatever. We're in the, you know, we have the little laptops open, maybe watching a movie on the plane, maybe doing some work, doing some, you know, PowerPoint. Even location for, shooting when, well, location. when we're shooting tethered and we've got the laptops open and yeah. the screen is like full brightness and stuff, exactly. you know, I mean, you know, extending that battery life is, is really awesome. critical. I mean, it's very important. Yeah. So and then yeah, for, that's good. Um, they also announced an airport, a new airport base station to go along right. with the MacBook Air because that now comes with uh, 802.11 AC, which is a faster protocol. Right. Um, so now they have a new base station to go along with it, and the base station um, has right. a hard drive in it, so you can right, use right. it for storage yeah. as well, like a like a time capsule thing. It's like time capsule. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. neat. I like that. I like that. Faster and storage. I don't mind. That sounds yeah. good. And then, of course, the Mac Pro. That's yes. you know there was there was so much talk in the industry back when, you know, Final Cut, you know, was neutered and, um, you know, other things were happening where we, they, you know, we didn't know as pros or, you know, are they going to get rid of the desktops completely? Are we going to be right. stuck with laptops and, you know, iMacs or what's going to happen? And no, they're not. They completely redesigned it. Um, it kind yeah. of looks like a cylinder now. Uh, I saw a funny picture where the top of it looks like a wok and there was like Chinese food cooking in it, <laughs> um, which I thought was really comical. Yeah, it was, it was kind of cool. But yeah, it's pretty neat. And what do they say? Like an eighth of the internal, like the size of it is just tiny. 
Yeah, yeah. So I am a Mac Pro Tower user and right. uh, love my computer. It's an old one too. I mean, I've mentioned it on the show before. It's from 2006. Right. Um, still runs great. It's a workhorse, but that thing is a beast. You know, if you've been in any of the Apple stores and 80 seen, pounds. <laughs> yeah, seen these Mac Pro Towers. I mean, they are huge. They're all metal. They're very heavy. They take up a lot of space. A lot of people put them down on the floor and I don't want them down on the floor because that's where you get all the dust and yeah. all that other stuff getting into it. So I, mine is actually sitting up on the desk and it takes up a huge amount of space. So this wow. new one is like one eighth the volume, they said. It actually measures 9.9 um, .9 inches tall and it's a cylindrical shape. It's like a right. tube and it, it had, it's 6.6 6 inches in diameter. That's right. tiny. No, I that's mean, the, a little, the uh, little thing. Yeah. What the uh, um, the Mac Minis are like <laughs> six and a half inches square, or something right. like that. So it's it's comparable to the the you know the width and depth there of a Mac Mini, and then yeah. it's ten inches high. I mean, that's nothing. That's yeah. absolutely nothing. You're looking like four or five Mac Minis stacked one on top of another. That's basically a pro now. Yeah. Um, compared to this huge thing that you need two guys to carry out, you know, the studio. So yeah, it's cool, and you know, up to twelve cores. You're talking about 40, giga, 40 gigabytes, right, per second. And that's going over PCIe, which is yep. really interesting, right? So Yeah, it's got a, a transfer speed right. of 40 gigabytes per second. And it's using the PCIe, PCI Express yeah. um, bus system. And, and uh, that protocol has been, fast. you know, that PCIe has been around for, what, six, eight years. So that's steadfast i mean you know it's going to be working good and if those right. numbers is what they're saying that's probably what you're going to get right right exactly and you can get up to 60 gigabytes per second of um ram right. speed you know access to your ram so this is really cool i mean this is definitely a pro computer yeah. uh, it's got dual gpus that come standard with it with up to six gigabytes of vram right and you can run um three High resolution 4K monitors off of these suckers. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, 4K, I mean, that's been around for a while now. You can buy 4K monitors. So by them making this announcement, that means to me, and I'm sure to you, within, you know, three, four, five months, you're going to see 4K um, displays available yep. through Apple Store. From Apple. Um, yeah. That will be about two grand a piece or something <laughs> will be, like that. Yes. I mean, they'll be really expensive. Very expensive. But they're going to be beautiful. And to have that high resolution, I mean, even running a single monitor at that type of resolution, I mean, assuming you can see that small text at that point, that really right. gives you um, a really nice, big workspace. Right. You know, so that's really cool. Yeah. Um, the flash storage. Flash storage. Crazy yeah. fast. Two and a half times, right? Yeah, so they, they gave some specs in, in on the website here. So a regular SATA hard drive that has a transfer speed of 110 megabytes per second, which is fast. I mean, that's nothing right. to sneeze at. That's like a 7200 RPM, yeah. you know, hard drive that comes in your, your computer. So the like the um, the current line of MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros that have the flash drives in them, right. that's using a SATA bus. And that has a 500 megabit per, or megabyte per second transfer rate. So that's, that's really, pretty really quick. That is pretty quick. So this new one is just sick. So it's using a PCIe flash storage and it's 1,250 megabytes per second. So that goes back to PCIe. I mean, PCIe is fast and yeah. has been around forever and you know it's gonna work. So just think about that. I mean, from a regular SATA drive, 7200, being at let's say 100 this is getting close to 1200 you're looking at you know 12 times the speed yep. um which is just sick you could record you know 4k video to yep. you know uh, to your heart's content probably three four feeds and not That's even right. feel it at all no so, and then they just, talked about um thunderbolt 2 right I, which was another yep. speed improvement right yeah well that's it so the previous max had thunderbolt the you know version one right. um this mac pro is going to have thunderbolt 2 it's going to have usb 3 uh gigabit ethernet and hdmi ports as well right. so you can actually plug in hdmi tvs to your right. mac pro so thunderbolt 2 does 20 gigabytes per <laughs> second of data transfer I mean, that's 20 gigabytes. I mean, crazy. that's just so, nuts. and that's, and, and so what I was speculating with this whole thing and the reason why these machines are getting smaller and smaller is because we are now able 
to take our stacks of rated drives, which we would normally, you know, anyone that's in video knows that to really do video correctly, you need to stripe drives, you need fast yep. drives, extremely fast, fast drives, all that. Yep. Fast throughput, and you usually have them stacked inside your Mac Pros. Well, right. now that you have, you know, Thunderbolt, X, I, can you imagine Thunderbolt, just external drives, like an entire, just a whole case of them, just plugged in with one little Thunderbolt cable yep. doing, you know, 20 gigabytes of throughput. I mean, it's faster than internal at that point. I mean, it's, it it's is faster so, than internal. so, yeah. so quick. So yeah, yeah no, at that point crazy. they don't need any heat inside those boxes, you know, it because that's always a that's always a concern um, is heat buildup due to these drives, um, right. and that's the end of it. And you just have all of your you know your main components on the inside. You take all of those um, drives and you move them onto the outside, and that's yep. it. Now you have this little tiny you know cylinder or little place that you can stick your wok to cook. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Chicken. I mean, yeah. you know, using flash storage as opposed to, you know, traditional hard drives, that ta saves a ton of space, but it's so fast. I mean, right. now these applications will boot up instantly. The computer yeah. will basically be on instantly. Right. You know, my kids have uh, those uh, Samsung Chromebooks. Right. The and those things are fast. And there's like no power in those things. I mean, they're meant, you know, they're low end. Yeah. You know, that's why we got them for the kids. They're like 250 bucks. But you hit the power on that thing, and within seconds, it's up and running and ready to go. Right. Um, that's the advantage of, of flash drives. And with these really amazingly fast buses, I mean, this, this is going to be smoking. I yeah. tell you what, as a Mac Pro user, um, definitely would uh, like to get my hands on one of these. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I definitely. don't know. I don't know. But, you know, we converted from, you know, our pros over to IMAX because we just love the monitor. You know, the they, the screens are beautiful and they just simply work. And uh, I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be a hard call. It's going to be a hard call because if we can continue yeah. to use um, the IMAX and get the job done, we'll probably keep going down that route. But you know, you just you just never know. So you know, kind of to finalize it, Bluetooth four, and of course you have your advanced uh, wire, wireless, which is the AC, right? The eight hundred two point eleven AC version, yep. which is built in, which is great. Um, you know, they they were talking about iCloud. Was it hit three three million accounts now? Fantastic. Three really, three hundred million accounts. Yeah, three hundred yep. million. So it's like okay, um, I work. Eh, nothing really dramatic uh, yeah they, talk about they're the having they're coming out with i work for the cloud it's i mean right, it's cool right. and all but yeah. i don't know that right. didn't really do much for me google know? docs you know basically yeah it's you know, basically it's, google docs yeah what it is so nothing yeah. really to talk about there um then of course you know the the idea of ios 7 the new yeah. the new and that was like the major i think that is probably you know the biggest thing the biggest uh, selling point through the entire WWDC because, you know, yep. they are focusing on iOS. That's like they're, you know, that's where they're making. Yeah, their that's, where they're, that's where that's, they're making their money now, right, for sure. That's it. So a lot of cool stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, the iOS overall set. interface has been redesigned. Beautiful. And it has a completely different look and feel to it. Um, it's very, um, a lot of translucencies and, right. and overlays of images and graphics and, you know, very three dimensional looking when you move it, you know, you can almost, it's almost like one of those, um, 3d lenticular chip type things. That right. Look at it one way. It like the image feels like it's behind the other one and stuff. I mean, exactly. you get a lot of simulated feels like that with this, with this operating system. So from a design standpoint and a user interface, it looks really cool. Yeah. They did a good job. You know, they have airdrop, um, that, you know, they were talking about that, uh, you know, the battery, once again, battery life battle, you know, that's like their, that's their mantra, I think for WWDC this year is battery life. They talked yep. about that, uh, with the multitasking of, um, all apps, um, that was like big, you know, the folders that was, that was pretty cool. I like the whole folders idea where you can actually take different things, stick them into folders and then move the folders around. That was kind of kind of cool and swiping yeah. in and out and, yeah, and whatnot. That's a, cool, it almost, that's a cool interface. You know, that interface almost feels like that, you know, that interface, like that new camera interface. Um, what was it? Analog camera. Right. Um, or the that other app, Clear. You know, it has that same type of, you know, make sense interface. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's almost, I would say it's a complete revamp of the, you know, the UI. It will no longer feel like an Android 
and an Android won't feel like Apple anymore, they've definitely completely moved kind of, yeah. I would say, to a different realm, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this AirDrop is pretty cool. That yeah. is kind of like the whole Android thing where you're, you know, where they're bumping the phones together. Right. You know, Samsung's promoting it right all the time, and you're uh, able to share photos and stuff like that. Well, AirDrop, you're not bumping your phones together. They actually joked about that. Right. And, you know, when you log in to AirDrop, it will actually show everybody in the surrounding area who is available. Yeah, who's and, sharing content, basically. And you just share the content. You just select and click share, and boom, it transfers it over to their yeah. device, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he was like, you don't have to walk across the room and go bump people's phones. Yeah, anymore. and go bump so, people's phones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's cool. I get exactly. it. <laughs> yeah, That's good. You know, the store, of course, they talked about the store. Siri, they give you, like, some new voices and whatnot. You know, yep. what's kind of interesting, though, is they're going with the search from Bing. Bing, really? Yeah. What I, happened there? I don't know. Well, you know, Microsoft, been, they, they're in bed now. Well, we've been watching the uh, the disconnect from Google Yeah. over the last, you know, uh, iOS 6. Mm-hmm. Um, they pulled out Maps. They pulled out um, YouTube that were all part of the default OS. Right. Um, it seems to me that, yeah, for whatever reason, Apple is trying to separate themselves from Google. Yeah, um, completely. You know, who knows? It obviously, it has something to do with financials. Right. Um, I'm sure that Google was paying Apple money um, in order to have their uh, browser as the default. They were probably being paid money to have their, you know, applications as part of the core operating system. Sure, sure. Google probably said, well, listen, you know, Android is becoming more popular and that's our thing. So, uh, you know, we're uh, we're not going to pay you as much money. And Apple probably <laughs> said, then fine. Then okay, you're off the phone. It. That's the yeah, end of that. We'll see so, you. Don't let the door hit you. In, that's right. Now we're in bed with <laughs> Microsoft. So, yeah, you know, speaking about Microsoft, you know, they bought Twitter and now Twitter is, um, uh, excuse me, Skype. They, they bought Skype. And yeah. um, now we know how much we like Skype. So, um, you know, Skype has just been horrid as of late and um, like ever since that, that transition. So right. what was interesting, though, which was kind of, you know, we laughed about a lot is um, iTunes radio. Um, what what happened with that? I mean, if this thing doesn't look like an exact replica, a rip, a, a of rip, rip Pandora, rip off. Yep. I just I mean, it's like an exact duplicate of Pandora. I mean, I don't know. I could imagine when WWDC was over, um, Pandora's lawyers were just, <laughs> you know, scurrying around yeah. you know like mice looking up <laughs> facts yeah. upon facts and taking a look at you know what patents they have and what's this and what's that and because i'm telling you everything they showed and they talked about with itunes radio is ex- it's pandora it's pandora just different uh different yeah. design different but the functionality is basically what oh pandora is i know we both laughed out loud actually <laughs> yeah. when we saw that and we said it's it's pandora They've totally ripped off Pandora. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> yeah, whole thing. We're, yeah. So you guys will probably listen to us talk about a lawsuit within the next month or two or at least something going on with that, because that was just I did, that was a blind side. And that was towards the very end of the, of yeah, the conference. They kind of so. just zinged it in there real quick, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was very, yeah. Oh, by the way, you know, yeah, we have yeah. Pandora. Oh, I mean, we have uh, yeah. iTunes radio, you know. <laughs> It's like, yeah, woo, right. that was not, not good. So anyways, Trev, we really need to get out of here. Yeah, I think we do. I think we do. It's a uh, running, uh, you know, nice length show here. As yeah. Usual. So, as uh, usual. so Joe, if people want to uh, connect with you outside of the show, what's the best way for them to reach you? You guys can find me on Twitter and that'd be at, at Joseph Christina. And that's Christina without an H. Great. And you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Kermit. All right, guys. We are done for another week. So you can find all of our show notes from this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash 109. And don't forget, if you enjoy the show, please give us a five-star review in iTunes. Help us spread the word through Twitter. And now you can give us a call through our new comment line by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash love. So keep the questions and comments coming and we will see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. 
Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.